Hi and welcome back again for another video feature of the Immersive Worlds Handbook. Uh, today I'm focusing on what I call the Lifestyle Hotel and I'm at the amazing hotel Citizen M in Shoreditch in London. This is actually a map of London that you're seeing here and this is uh, near the elevators. Um, this is another shot of the elevator here and I'll be taking you through a number of the spaces in this video feature today. Uh, most notably I'll be focusing on the room and some of the innovative features that you note in the room. This is just downstairs and to your left there you see that wood staircase it leads up to the uh, check-in desk and I'll be taking you through the interesting check-in procedure as well which is one of the uh, innovative features that you'll notice here at Citizen M. We're looking at the lobby just look at all the accoutrements here all the material culture those are the uh, video screens I'll take you through those and show you that process of how you really don't have to even talk to a human when you check in and check out of the hotel you see a guitar there on the wall. You see the trappings of what really is a high-end, uh, classy hotel that has a lot of connection, as I'll talk about in this video, to the surrounding environment. You see some office buildings out the window there. Um, you'll also be seeing here in a little bit some of the interesting graffiti and art features. There's that staircase that you walk up and just take a look at those lamps and the amazing lighting features there. A shot at night as we just uh, look at some of the cool features. Here's some of the graffiti inside the hotel. There are the um, elevators that take you up to your room. And in this video feature today I'll be talking about how this particular hotel hits the mark in so many respects in terms of creating such an interesting, innovative, and really cool and hip hotel for the guest. You're seeing right there some of that graffiti on the outside of the hotel. And I think it's one of the things that makes Citizen M so interesting is how it is able to really fit in with the surrounding environment. I'll show you some more of these shots of the cool artwork and there's some interesting rail cars just above the hotel as you walk out one of the main doors. But you just see how I think they've really understood the importance of connecting um, with the local environment. We're actually near Box Park. Um, which is an interesting, innovative anti-mall. And be sure to check out that video as well. I have a video feature where I'll take you through that interesting mall, which is literally less than five minutes, just right up the street here towards the left. This is the view looking out of the hotel, another great mural that you see in this area. We're so near Brick Lane, uh, many of the great uh, curry houses and interesting uh, shops and restaurants. We're near um, the uh, Shoreditch Market, the... Uh, uh, indoor market which is really cool and interesting. Here's a little more of that shot of some of the cool aesthetic features, the graffiti that you see as you walk out of the hotel. Uh, just to the left is the hotel there and to the right you see all this graffiti which uh, I noticed during my visit quite a few people were taking photos or even a few film crews using this as an interesting backdrop. So I think what's great about Citizen M is that it does fit in so well with the local environment. What I'll do in this video feature today is to take you through mainly the interior spaces of the hotel, particularly the room. We'll look at some of the mood lighting features. We'll look at uh, the TV, the free movies. There's a shot of the hotel right there, the black structure you see in the middle of the screen. There are those rail cars. I'll show you a, uh, a reverse view of that right up there at the top so you kind of get your bearings here. So what I'll be doing coming up here is uh, giving you my on-site commentary that I recorded when I stayed at Citizen M in Shoreditch in 2018. I hope you enjoy this video tour because I think it is one of the most innovative hotels that I've ever stayed in and hopefully you'll get a chance to uh, visit London sometime and see some of the neat things that this hotel offers in terms of being a lifestyle hotel. All right and we'll enter the room here and um, start the tour here at, at Citizen M. So one of the things you'll notice um, when you first enter one of the rooms, and they may have different size rooms, is that it is relatively small for a hotel room. Um, it is definitely narrow. I mean, I could easily touch, um, you know, the length of not even, yeah, I mean, you, you wouldn't have to have too long of arms to just reach both of the walls here. So it's, it's, it's pretty um, small, but the way they've used, used the space here, I think is, is very innovative and effective. Um, when I talk about the bathroom, I'll mention that I think it's maybe one of the best uses of um, hotel spaces ever seen, and it's maybe a tip for 
hotels in cities like San Francisco and New York were typically, or Chicago, where they're fairly small and you sometimes feel um, quite cramped. And one of the things they've done here that helps with that, I think a lot of traditional hotels have the box um, set up where it's a separate room, you open a door, there's the uh, toilet, the shower, and then also the basin, um, the wash uh, basin, the sink. They put that out here and I think it actually helps with space a little bit so you don't give up too much um, counter space for your toiletries, which can be an issue in hotels in those cities I've mentioned, Chicago, New York, San Francisco. They also give you um, opportunities here to put either toiletries or your um, clothing if you like. And they have even a miniature fridge here, which is pretty cool. So I've got some uh, water, which came with the room, and um, a sandwich from one of my favorite places when I visit London or the UK, it's Pret, um, the sandwich place, which I just cannot get enough of so you can see what I have stocked in the fridge, which is not too much. But um, kind of cool actually having this as as an opportunity to um, have some snacks and so forth. They don't have a micro, but um, I think it's just fine. And then here you have the, the hair dryer is hiding. So you have the hair dryer there in the um, bag and um, you can see just the rest of what we have going on here. The lighting in the room, there's really good use of plugs. I'll talk about that later. The lighting is, is also very good. So we can turn on the mirror light on and off. And then also the, uh, trying to see where the vanity light is. Oh, there. Okay, it's this light here. Yep. So I have to hold that down a little bit, I guess. And like we um, noticed in some aspects of the, uh, the branding here, you have um, Citizen M soap designed to um, turn even the longest haul traveler into a sparkling clean and nice smelling human being again. Pretty good use of humor. And the overall design approach they're using with the um, the type, the, the fonts, and also the uh, color branding with black I think is, is pretty good. You see that like throughout the hotel and throughout um, the various things we encounter as a traveler, which would be the soap, the uh, signage on the door, as you can see here. And they have a thing which is, is kind of cool you can put on your door that they donate to charity um, if you choose not to get um, your room uh, clean for a particular day. You put the um, particular sign on the outside of the door by 7 a.m. and then um, they donate a certain amount to charity because of that which is kind of cool. So here's a very small um, closet area and um, at this point too since I'm, I'm giving a talk actually at the University of Oxford in a couple days so I was yesterday of all things ironing my shirt um, just actually down the hall and I'll show you some uh, uh, photography and video and it's actually kind of cool when you enter this um, uh, bay for the uh, laundry basically it's just an ironing board with this really cool amazing like steamer type iron which I haven't experienced before you um, have one of these on every floor so it eliminates the space needs of having say an iron in here I mean having the ironing board and the iron would take up almost half of this closet space so I think it's a really smart idea to have that um, as an option, particularly for business travels, travelers if you need your dress shirts iron. But the funny thing yesterday was I was in there and um, it was really starting to steam up and I guess the um, sensor, it must be the fire alarm sensor went off. So one of the workers came and she had a radio and she was really concerned and said, are you okay? And I assured her I was and then I said, um, you know, am I using the iron wrong? Is there something I'm doing? So I'm not sure what happened there with the uh, the sensor, but yeah, it, um, it was pretty amazing iron though, I have to say. So if you stay at Citizen M, you can expect um, nicely ironed clothes if you need that. If you don't, then you don't have to visit the um, iron facility. There's also a um, pretty handy safe. Again, everything they've done here in terms of like just design and functionality is really smart. So this is great function as far as your shoes and the safe goes here, the space, you know, is taken up here, but then you also still have some space at the bottom for your shoes. So major kudos to Citizen M4 having such an effective um, approach to space. So we already looked at the um, the wash, wash basin, the sink out here. Then we get into the main area. And it, I think as you can appreciate that it's not a huge room, but um, for me, this is the smallest room that I've ever stayed in that I didn't feel that it 
it was small, if that makes sense. Um, so it, it, it's an effective use of space. And because of some of the um, trappings here, the way they've designed the bed, um, the, smart, the smart pad here that controls the room, and um, you know where the TV is, and it's a flat screen and so forth, I think allows for a really good impression on the part of the guests in terms of feeling about that space. You can see they have pretty cool um, furniture here. Um, it's not, you know, over the top. If, if you remember my video on the um, art hotel in Berlin with the really radical color schemes inside, I, I think in retrospect, I found that to be a little loud in terms of my mood. This is more subdued, particularly when you get into some of the mood lighting as we'll look at um, in a second. So yeah, there, there isn't a lot to say here. You can just see everything is, is very kind of minimalistic in terms of approach. Um, the color scheme and so forth. We have over here a little bit of the art and throughout the hotel I'll show you um, in post some of the um, imagery of downstairs and lobby and the elevators and they've done a lot I think throughout the hotel to give a really good consistent use of branding again through the color scheme through a little playfulness and, and some slight um, humor. And so there's there's great consistency there in terms of the hotel design. Uh, this is really cool and um, I'll probably talk about this too much, but so what? So, so this is um, th like the best power setup I've seen in a hotel. And so it's really cool because you have your three main European uh, power sources. Uh, so, or actually this is US rather. So you have um, the US, you have um, the uh, power setup for, I just was in Germany, so I'm confusing these, but this is the German one, right? So I happen to use this because I needed two US plugs today. And then you have the UK one. And then you also have two USB ports. So this is pretty amazing because you're traveling for most parts, you will not even need to bring converters with you. Um, and these are becoming more standard where you just have the USB chargers because a lot of people have their iPads or smartphones. But um, what a great opportunity for the guests. And again, this kind of like the shower head is probably not all that expensive, I would imagine, per room. I don't know the cost of it, but it pays dividends because you come into a room and you see something like this and you just, you may not verbalize it, you may not even write it on a comment on Yelp, but it's something that is um, intangible just in terms of the practicality when you're traveling, particularly internationally, in my case, traveling through um, Germany this trip and also the UK, this would um, allow me to use any, any power sources I want with or without my adapters. So very, very, very cool. Um, you have another light here, and then you have your traditional TV remote. And as you'll see in a second, it's not really necessarily needed um, in this room. You have um, a pretty cool pen. Um, I don't know if you're into hotel pens, but this is pretty cool. It's um, got the Citizen M logo and branding on it and it's actually a um, usually these tend to be ballpoint this is not so it's actually a good quality pen for a change so got that going on we also have um, put in the light here so you can see it a couple of things this is just a um, a traditional notepad so it's blank notes for writing addresses or ideas or thoughts but what's cool is what they've done textually on front um, great fiction, works of art, or rude poems, they all stay here. So again, this to me is, this is really cheap, right, to have in a room, but it really gives the guests that a bit of a wink here, a little bit of humor being used, standing out. Um, and as I'll show you some of the outside um, photography of the area, this is a pretty hip area in terms of Shoreditch. So um, it this goes along, I think, with like an art lifestyle aesthetic. This I actually found when I checked in and by the way, the check-in um, features are also really cool, and I'll give you some uh, photography on that later. And we'll take a, a quick break from some of the room uh, tour, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the check-in procedure here at Citizen M in London, Shoreditch, and you're seeing the monitors right there. Um, so it's pretty cool when you check in and check out, it's relatively as easy a process as I can imagine. They have a series of computer monitors set up. Um, there is one attendant if you need some help, but basically um, after you pay, this um, pad right here activates your key. So it's like the quickest check-in and check-out I've ever experienced. Um, you can also, you see there's the um, blank keys so you can recycle it. 
um, when you when you leave when you get there you take a new key and um, the cool thing too when you're seeing the monitors from the front side is you can do any sort of upgrades that you might want as far as choosing your room and um, I've never seen a system like this and I think it's another example of how Citizen M really does do something quite different for the guest this approach to checking in I think um, establishes Citizen M in that sense of being more of a lifestyle hotel in terms of its coolness. Um, sometimes the check-in procedure in a typical hotel can be a little bit stuffy, so you don't see that here at Citizen M in London. Later, But this talks about some of the design um, in the hotel. And for someone like me, when I see something like this, this says um, Two things. One, a lot of thought went into designing the furniture, the accoutrements, and these are a lot of the shots of um, looks like the lobby area. And I am assuming this design goes well and uh, above and beyond. Um, maybe you know, spaces beyond this hotel. I'm not sure, but this you know says a lot of thought went into the design, and also it suggests that. Um, the hotel is, you know, has a sense of coolness, a hipness, again, going along with the aesthetic of um, maybe some of the guests who might stay here. So that I, I love seeing this kind of stuff um, in a hotel. Some of the German hotels I've stayed in, um, 25 hours as an example, does a lot of this where they supplement um, the traditional, you know, texts like in a Marriott hotel, it might talk about the history of Marriott hotels, but it will actually have, um, in some cases, design information which for me is is always very um, appreciated okay we can shift over here and like you've seen with, with the um, wash basin you can control a lot of lights here so we can pick the desk lamp we can do the um, the other um, from light to dark and then this is really cool here so we have the blinds and the curtains so we can actually do that now let's see get a sense Actually, I should do. I should do the blind first, and this will give us our view of the city. And if you've seen some of my um, Las Vegas videos, often I make much ado <laughs> about the view and and the whole you know setup with the curtains and so forth. You can see it really brings a ton of light into her, um, and this adds too, like this particular visual. Um, the way the bed is set up here, and again, what's cool about the Citizen M is the bed is a, a king size, it's not small, which is rare for Europe, I would say, and it runs the full length, so you can almost do like a UK king size bed, and you would immediately know the dimensions of the room. So that is like what distinguishes the left from the right side of the room, and um, that's awesome. It's suggesting like, you know, a guest appreciates um, having a decent sized bed, and that's what defines the... Um, the dimension, in this case, the width of the room. Um, this is also a space saving thing. It reminds me of a little Ikea thing, and that is your main area for storage. Um, this looks a lot messier than normal because I was trying to get all my camera stuff and clothing um, out of the room so you, you could have a decent view of the room without a bunch of clutter, which is always hard. By the way, totally unrelated, if you travel um, anywhere, particularly for me to Europe, these um, I got these um, vacuum bags on Amazon and they are absolutely a lifesaver. They're really cheap and it allowed me to stuff a bunch of stuff in my backpack suitcase that I always take when I go to Europe because I don't like um, having a rolling suitcase because I use a lot of the trains and so forth. But this is pretty amazing. You can stuff this, you seal this off here and you fold it shut and somehow the air, um, you don't need any kind of pump or vacuum. Um, so the air comes out of the bag and you are just absolutely We'll be amazed at how much stuff you can fit. So anyway, totally unrelated. But I thought I would mention it because it's a, um, a cool space saving uh, technique. So we can peer over here the bed. You can see we're just in the hustle and bustle of London, of Shoreditch. Um, we've got the really cool um, artwork here. Um, we're right near Brick Lane, so there's a, a ton of um, amazing restaurants and all these cool murals and um, artwork on all the walls and everything and it's just an amazing area and you feel like if you stay here you're just in the midst of, of everything. Just close the blind there 
go back to our other lighting. So I thought we could take a look at, which is for me maybe the coolest feature of this hotel room. And this is this um, smart pad. And actually before that, why don't we just take a look at this as well. So you go to a traditional hotel and you often have the book of information and it's it's often like I, I think it's it's very austere how they have it or very like fancy looking so it'll be like a leather binder of some sort and it's usually um, three hole punch so you can add or subtract information and it's usually tapped this is quite different right so it's very sparse it's very minimalistic it has the branding um, the color and logos and typography of Citizen M and it's called the big useful book of Citizen M and you open it up and it has all the information and this is this is quite I mean this is quite nice just the way they've they've laid this out in terms of like very the most important information right so check in and check out um, mentions the free Wi-Fi within the room it talks about the shower um, luggage it mentions the um, luggage drawer under the bed how do the wall switches work the power sockets us uk and your Euro european variants and usb chargers hair dryer the safe extra services and fridge so it, it it's kind of like you know they've only put here the information in its most minimalistic form i mean this in a typical hotel would be over three or four pages maybe even five or six pages and this happens to be all the stuff I've, I didn't look at this. I just looked at it now and it's all the stuff we talked about, the shower, the space under the, um, the bed, the power sockets, the safe, um, the fridge and so forth. So very cool. This is the mood pad and we're going to get to this in a second. So the mood pad is used to control your entire room from the TV and alarm clock equipped with wonderful wake up themes to blackout blinds, room temperature, ambient lighting. It's your in-house sidekick. If you need assistance or clarification, don't hesitate to contact an ambassador, dial zero. So we'll look at the mood pad. Um, the mood pad will allow us to control the lights. Um, the color wheel, which we'll get to, talked about with the shower there. Um, the blackout blind curtain, wake up calls, temperature control, entertainment, um, TV on and off, and then Apple TV. So if you want to stream anything from your Apple device, um, photos or videos or whatever, you could do that very easily just through Wi-Fi. Um, this then is beyond the room, talks about the living room, downstairs, the canteen, and then the um, about the furniture maker, which we looked at there. And then this is another statement. You can, you can read this if you like, and it... Um, it's just, you know, one of these things that when you read something like this, it maybe gives you a sense of the brand identity of the hotel in, in question. So this, again, I think is something that for any hotel to do is not very expensive, um, but goes a long way in terms of establishing both the identity of the hotel and its branding, and then also creating a sensibility about the lifestyle demographics of the uh, uh, traditional guests maybe who would visit a place like Citizen M. Um, and by the way, I would say if you um, have seen other videos on Las Vegas hotels like the Aria and Cosmo Cosmopolitan, a version of this often accompanies the room. I think this is the most advanced that I've seen in terms of offering all these opportunities for the guest. So starting up here, you have the home. This will tell you um, most of the information and then all the things you need potentially are accessible. So this has the weather. I can adjust the lights. They turn off or on very easily. I can move the temperature up and down the blinds. And they're doing it right there. I'm gonna go back down. So you can see the whole room is automated. We can do a wake up. Oh, let's see. I clicked on that and it looks like all, yeah, and actually what happened was all the lights turned on in the room. And then here um, at the bottom, you can do streaming as I mentioned, you can turn on and off the TV. And then you can choose the channel and of course the volume. So, and it, the cool thing about the TV is when you uh, 
first enter the room, it welcomes you and you're welcome as a citizen. So welcome, Citizen Scott. I don't know what you think of that, but I think it's kind of cool actually. You often have this in like traditional hotels, but it's a little, it feels a little more stuffy maybe in terms of how they do it. So hipper here for sure. And going back to the pad here, we can click on media. You have all the possible TV channels. And then up here, I can click on, let's see, I could click radio, I can click movies, and this is actually pretty cool. So these have all the movies you can watch for free, and it's another perk for the guests. And there are quite a few, some are older ones, some are new ones. You can click on the alarm, um, the type of wake up, do you want a gradual, do you want an immediate? Um, you can choose between 24 hour time or not non. Um, this talks about the hotel itself. So it mentions the same things we saw in the useful big book of Citizen M. And this gives you location information and is, looks like, yep, just like a traditional. So this basically, you probably have this on your smart device or iPad or iPhone, but this allows you then very quickly to, um, click on areas and find food and things near to the hotel. So th this is like, I would say pretty remarkable what they've done here in terms of this mood pad. But let me show you the coolest thing. So let's click on smart room. And this is again, allows us to adjust the lighting so we can go light or dark. And then we can also do the mood light. So I'm trying to see what the best way to do this is. And we might need a second camera inside the shower, this will work. Okay, so basically I can choose, would this be the hue? Um, but I, I can basically choose the color of the light that I want and then the light changes in the shower stall. Um, if you're a family and you had kids, you'd probably be like, um, you know, the kid, kids would just go nuts over something like this. But again, it's really cool. It's a, something that is not that expensive to have um, in the hotel, but it probably delivers a lot in terms of the guests and their sensibility about not only feeling comfortable in a room like this, but making it stand out from other rooms. There's a lot that they've done here from the bed to how they designed the shower um, toilet area to the efficient use of space to the branding to the mood pad, and then this mood lighting that really does establish this hotel as very different. And when you think about tens of thousands of choices in, in big cities, um, or thousands of choices probably, um, you know, this is one way to uh, make things stand out from the competition. Okay, I thought I'd show you a little bit more with the app here. And this is on the, uh, again, the smart room control. You can control the lights on, um, here as well as the uh, color therapy light for the shower stall. Um, the temperature is accessible here so it's very easy to adjust the fan speed and the temperature of the room. You can do the blinds which there's also a switch on the wall as well. And then this I thought was kind of interesting just from a perspective of what you don't expect in a room. And this is the um, choice of mood. Um, so it says here, choose a mood that suits your current state of mind and we'll adjust the room settings to suit you. So we can try these. Um, we'll choose party. Okay, I'm gonna pull that away. So you see it kind of um, has a red or more like an orange hue perhaps. Okay, so check this out. Didn't realize that it did this too. Um, it also, on the TV has this.
movie. Allows you to watch the movies that are accessible on the tablet and it looks like it sets the light that is uh, maybe considered conducive to watching a movie. All right, so I thought we would next uh, take a look at the uh, bathroom. And you know, um, in the world of uh, hotels, certainly the bathroom, um, I think plays a role in the um, guests and uh, his or her expectations about the room, its level of comfort and so forth. So they have a, a I think a really unique um, bathroom set up here and it's both space saving and also part of the design approach. And um, one thing you can see here is they have a curtain that actually allows you to um, basically divide the um, bathroom and the remaining space. And again, there isn't a lot of space um, here from the bedroom area. Um, and then the other thing, and I'll show you this in a, in a bit, but you can maybe see the effect from the um, curtain here, requires some uh, use of dual cameras to show you the effect, but I'm just going to change the lighting here. And I think you're seeing that effect as I'm going through the color spectrum. Um, and I can actually pull the curtain back and you'll get a better sense. You can see now it's green. Let's pull the camera back a little bit here and I will just go through the different mood settings. Um, and for me this is like a first as far as having the ability to have like color control. I guess you could call it color light therapy. Um, it's really a first. I've never seen this in a hotel room. So um, for me, you know, someone who studies this, um, these sorts of aspects of design, I mean, it's ab absolutely um, amazing to see something like this. And we'll have to come back to this and I'll show you how it works on the built-in um, uh, smart pad for the room. But for now, let's, what's a good color to do the filming inside the cubicle? We'll go with that shade perhaps. Looks pretty good. Yeah, so as I was saying earlier, What's different about this room is that you have the entire like bathroom facility, restroom facility in one cubicle. And of course you have this in other hotel rooms. Typically what happens is it's a square or um, rectangular uh, setup. And that actually takes up more room. What you can see is, as you start here in the room, you come in the front door, you have a very small um, area like for closet. There isn't a, a lot of space here for storing of um, personal items, which I think is fine because they've created a very smart use of space. And I have to say this is maybe one of the best um, like inch for inch or foot for foot um, uses of space in a hotel room I've ever seen. And it's small, but it really doesn't feel small. In fact, I've stayed at, I'm thinking of a hotel in Chicago and maybe in um, post I'll show you an image of that, but it had um, a small layout and also a less traditional shower and bath area. And I think this is a much smarter use of, of space than that one. Um, I'm also thinking of a hotel I, I stayed at in Berlin that had not this sort of setup, but it had a very curvilinear approach in turn in, as opposed to a more square approach to the bathroom. So, you know, this is pretty smart. And the other unique thing about it is, and it's a little hard for me to capture all this just because of the um, tightness of the broom, but as you open it up, you're going to notice um, that everything is in one vestibule, I guess you would call it. So this is the um, the toilet area right here. You have a very small um, trash can. I always notice in, in Europe, the trash cans tend to be a little smaller in hotels, which is probably a good thing because um, I, I think, you know, American society were known for wasting and uh, producing a lot of trash. Um, but you can see here then what we have going on. This is really where the color uh, therapy of the room is happening. Um, it doesn't happen anywhere else in the room. So when you adjust the mood lighting, um, these other lights don't change. They just stay traditional white light. Um, yeah, so this is where all the mood stuff happens. And it does have a good effect if you're in the other part of the room, you do get that like residual or ambient um, color lighting in other parts of the room. So they have a um, um, a pretty basic just um, shower screen here. Um, I do notice sometimes when you have a setup like this, like you you get sometimes the water just kind of comes in. It's, it's a little tricky just keeping the water from not getting into this other area, but for cleaning, it's probably really 
quite quite easy. Um, yeah, and so the one of the coolest things about this room is right here. So this is the rain shower, and you actually have a choice. There's a um, um, a knob that chooses between the rain shower, which is on top, or you can do the handheld shower. I have to say, like this, um, I just remember buying like um, like kind of a higher end kitchen faucet and actually it was probably not a high end, but it was pretty expensive. So I imagine that this particular setup to um, purchase something like this per room adds, you know, in construction hundreds of dollars, I would imagine, maybe even more than that. I mean, I can't imagine how much this costs, but it's an example of something if you spend this um, on the guest, I think it pays incredible dividends in terms of social media and people's overall pleasure um, with the room. So I can actually show you how this works. Hopefully it won't get all wet doing this, but let's turn it on. So there you go, it's the rain shower. Um, okay. Um, and the other thing that's cool from a, a branding perspective is I'm kind of a big proponent whenever the hotel, particularly more of a, a lifestyle hotel, tries to do something with its uh, toiletries or pens or notepads or even um, do not disturb signs. I think it's a really um, cost effective yet significant way um, to make a connection with the guest. So this is an example of it, if you can make that out. You have two options. You have the Citizen AM shower shampoo, designed for citizens who embrace the day, wrestle with the light of dawn, or who are jet lagged into thinking it's morning, even though it's midnight. Citizen AM shower gel and shampoo will make you feel like you've just opened your eyes after the best dream-filled sleep of your life, and perhaps you just have. Okay, Citizen PM shower sh shampoo, um, designed for citizens who live by the night, dance with the dark, and don't wake up until the sun goes down. Citizen PM shower gel and shampoo will make you feel like you're about to walk out into Wonderland and that somehow everything tonight will just fall into place and and you never know, it just might. Okay, so again, um, kind of an easy way to make a connection with the guest um, in terms of like adding a story or a narrative, um, in some cases a bit of fun, to um, the experience. So yeah, that is the tour here of the traditional, less than traditional um, bathroom. Okay, and with that uh, room tour, we'll be drawing this uh, video today here at Citizen M to a close. I wanted to show you one more example of how this hotel really in some amazing ways fits in with the surrounding environment. So this is just straight out of the hotel. We're looking around, you see just all this interesting aesthetic and subcultural interest. You see these um, uh, walls of glass here that give you this uh, illusion of being really connected to um, the environment around you. So just a, a great stay. I hope you enjoyed the video feature today here at Citizen M Shoreditch. Um, hope, hopefully get a chance to come to London and experience this amazing hotel. And as usual, please come back for additional video features of the Immersive World's Handbook.